Hi, Frank Thomas here. I'm uh, here today to give you a bit of an intro to the software called Xenoposter. Um, I've done a quick screen snap of my menu structure. I'm running the Pro version, and as you can see, there's four different modules showing up here. You, know, you might not see the code creator, you might, I'm not sure, but the modules I'm concerned about today are the Cat Monster, the Project Maker, and the Xenoposter Pro. Okay, the um, this is the way the, the things play out here. Whenever you're designing a project, you're going to be using the Project Maker. This one right here, okay? This is where you create your program, your automation sequence and such, and get things running. Secondarily, you'll be using the Xenoposter Pro. The Xenoposter Pro is uh, an application that contains everything to completely automate your uh, Xenoposter sequence, your template that you create, after everything is done in the project maker. It includes things like the uh, the proxy discovery program, um, scheduling, uh, task manipulation, such. Okay. Third is the Cat Monster. Cat Monster is something I'm not going to talk about today, but it is the module that allows you to actually solve CAPTCHAs, simple CAPTCHAs, automatically, and you can train it to do just about every, any CAPTCHA. I think the only caveat is um, the Google the Google CAPTCHAs that uh, are out there right now. So I think that's the only thing it cannot resolve, but it, give it time. It will only be a matter of time, and then they'll figure that out too. So for today, I'm going to show you some of how to use Project Maker by simply doing a project with you. Okay, let me just close that there. And I'm going to fire up Project Maker. Okay, so we have Project Maker running here. I've uh, squeezed some of the top of the screen out here and some of the bottom of the screen. Let me just uh, zip into here and you can see um, there's our top bar there and we have actually four major selectors in the program. What the folks at Xenolabs have done is they've actually set up their programs as major functional components within each program. So in development there's four major parts here. Now there is the template editor, and this is where you're going to actually see the flow of your program as you build it, okay? We'll be getting to that in a second. Secondarily is the actions recorded on the web page. This is where you're actually creating code on web page automation. Third is email processing. This is where you create your code for email processing. And fourth is the regular expression builder. It's, this is one component that right now is a little shaky in my opinion. It's 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 got great conception, and uh, as soon as they tidy up a few things on it and get it working 100%, it's going to be a fantastic component to actually designing. What it lets you do is it lets you find pieces within an email or anything you put into it, and um, will let you quickly ascertain what you need to scrape out, and it'll actually create the regular expression uh, for you. Okay, but for now, let's take a look at here. What I'm going to do today, just to illustrate, I'm going to do what a lot of other guys have already done, and I'm going to illustrate creating an automation sequence. Once we've created the sequence, I'm going to show you how to actually go in and do an email processing, and finally, we're going to look at template editor and how to modify a template. Okay, so give me one second. For today's example, I've chosen a uh, social bookmarking site called uh, Siphon. Okay, as you can see, I've put it in there. Now, what I want you to watch out for is a few small things. As we're designing code, it's going to show up in this section here, and I want you to watch this bubble here. It goes from green when I when I go to a page. Let's just let me just show you. I'm going to go to this particular page by pressing the the uh, the forward button. And you see this goes red, yellow, and green. You cannot do any actions or commit any actions in here unless this is showing green. So we always want to wait for that to happen. So we're on the site and uh, to actually sign up what we can do is look for the section of the page that says join us when we click it you see it's showing the j click on the link join us this is what we want now we're going to register I happen to have an actual set of email addresses that I use and uh, let me grab one of them okay so we could uh, when we're filling in fields here we could use a little bit of the functionality called macros right away let me show you what that is I'm going to right click on here and you can see that I can actually go in here and set the value with the help of a macro. Okay, I'm going to click open macro builder 
Now macros are extremely important within the uh, actual project maker program. This is where you kind of create a lot of your logic. So let's say I want to create personal data. I'm going to create a login and I can test this macro and you can see down here it creates a nice name. Now some of them are extremely long. A way to shorten it, this is something you're not going to find in the book, with any actual log template here, you can actually go in here and reduce this to 4 to a 2 and you can see automatically a lot of the names are going to be a lot shorter. So I like that. So what we want to do now is we want to copy this to the clipboard. Okay, We'll minimize that and what we'll do is we'll paste it into here. Okay, We'll say OK. And as you can see it fills in just a random name. Now I've got my email address here. Let me just grab my email address. And I'm just going to manually just paste it in there. Okay, and I'm going to choose a password. Okay, I'm going to replicate that password. And you can see we have a nice <laughs> captcha that's going to be difficult to solve. So the first thing we want to do is in creating the steps, we're not just going to solve the captcha. I'm going to right click on it and say this is a captcha. This tells the program that what it finds here is the actual captcha image. Now at this point I'm going to stop the recording. Actually let me start the recording. I'm going to select this box here, field for captcha recognition result. Okay. Now I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to actually manually fill that in. We'll hope that suffices. Okay, I'm going to start the recording. So basically, when I stop the recording, what it did not do is it did not record me filling that spot in. Okay, I've read the guidelines. As you can see, the passwords in there, the capture recognitions in there, and I'm going to click to create user. Okay, Let's just give it a second. You see, it's red, yellow and finally green and let's see what it gives us here at the top okay so we have some text here that we can use to give us some sort of idea whether or not the initial registration worked okay and here it is right here hopefully not th what we're gonna do is we're gonna select that text we're gonna right click it and we're gonna click create selected text presence check okay so what that does is it grabs that text and we say okay and it's just like a check. Is it there or is it not? And you'll see how that is played out here in a second. Okay, so let's go look at the template editor right now. Right now, the new project window is completely empty. I'm going to go back here, and now I'm going to copy this to the editor. It's going to pop open a window, because I've only got the one project open called New Project. That's what it's going to show me. Okay, it jumps to the template editor, and here we go. So you can see it's created those steps. Clear the cookies. Go to the page siphon, click on the join us, you know, click the join us link, etc., etc., etc. Okay? But in the normal process of things, the next thing we have to do is we actually have to solve or grab the registration. So let me just show you what it looks like over here. Over here inside of the actual folder, I'm going to click on the inbox with this user, there is an email in place called welcome to siphon. Okay? Well, let's go over to the email processing. Now I'm going to be putting in the same log. My login for this is the same as my email, and the password is just password one two three. And I'm going to type in the name of the mail server here. This will be obscured, so don't be afraid that something's wrong. Okay, I'm going to check to see if I can receive any messages. Okay, and as you can see, everything worked good there, and you see the welcome to siphon message. Now, the actual explanation of some of the tutorials really doesn't show you this screen very well. What I want to show you is right now, we're seeing like an HTML version of the text. Now, we could see the footer, we might not like the actual, um, not the footer, but the actual contents of the message, we might not. And this is the header of the message. Now, what we want to, we, we want to do to actually pick this message out is we want to look inside of the actual header message 
the header of the message here for a from or a subject matter. See here subject? Welcome to Siphon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that text. I'm going to, right cop I'm going to copy that by doing control C and I'm going to lay that into the that into there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to parse the message. And as you can see, because it can find that text within the message, it's happy with that. Let me just throw a DD at the end there and you can see what the difference is. You see how that message disappeared off the list? Because there is no message in my inbox that matches the text there. So when I put that in like that and I parse it again, you'll see that that text is there. So first of all, the regular expression for determining the required message is actually giving it, you know, we're looking for something that actually says this is the message that we're looking for to find the registration code, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I am going to copy this whole piece here and I'm going to port it over to a program called Edit Pad Pro. I've talked about this software in other places. Um, if you want to look at my tutorials, uh, when I talk about UBOT and such, you're going to see that I use this program pretty much the same. So the reason why I'm doing this and I'm not using the regular expressions builder is I find that the regular expressions builder is not that great. Not yet at least. They need to refine the program and make it better and when they do it's going to be awesome and you're going to love it and, but I'm not going to kid you right now it's not working great. So for now and for today's lesson I'm going to use EditPad Pro. Okay so I've got the message here now I'm looking for the actual link. Now there's the link right there. Copy or paste this link to your browser. Or here we can see the same link again. Now you can see the link actually has something that is pretty easy to grab. Okay, but it's.